Hello and welcome. This is just a, uh, I'm pretty sure I haven't made a video on this before. This is a PvP map that I've been working on. And um, I'm going to go over the basic gameplay. I'm in the later stages of the map by now. I started it about midsummer. And I worked on it for quite a while up until like fall and then I took a break for a while. And I'm getting back to working on it again. This is probably the most complex redstone project I've ever done. Be because of all the commands that I'm using to keep track of things. This is the, like the main clock that keeps con that controls everything. <laughs> flip that lever to turn the clock off and the map stops doing everything. It all just stops. But anyways, um, I'm still trying to think of a name. Current idea is Team Slayer. Um, this is like the main spawn room. Press buttons. It's a link. You can click it. Um, the only I'm only getting spammed by this because I'm in creative mode. If if you're not in creative mode, you don't get that spamming your chat. I can uh, probably demonstrate it by. And if we wait a while, you'll notice that I'm not getting any more of the messages. Yeah, no more. They all gone now. Until I go back into creative mode. Um, this is like the main spawn room. Basically, this is meant for you just sit here and wait for everyone to join. Got a bunch of the uh, signs in to like just discuss the map as it is. And so basically this is just to wait for everyone to get on the server and then you would press this button and it will randomize all the teams. And it will then move everyone into here where you can s decide to either play or decide that the teams aren't good and you can re-randomize them. I'll probably add a uh, team selection room at some point in time but not really on my list of concerns right now just want to get the map to work which I guess you can say it does it there's a lot of complex commands involved with everything then you got like stuff around here where it checks if my if the Jogo Yo player is on the server Ooh, what's up with the 33 don't know what that is <laughs> uh, yeah um so basically it'll check if I'm on the server and if I'm not on the server it'll use a tell raw command to say that I've joined the server. I do believe if I yeah, if I just press this button it'll run without starting the game actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, at the end of the game, I believe it says I left. I don't know. Um, but when you start the game, my uh, it'll use tell raw commands to have me do a countdown. And I believe if we play this, it won't start the game. Even if it does start the game, it won't be a big deal. Um, I believe the first one is supposed to play the same note block sound. I'll change that. <laughs> I 
I keep opening up the command block while that sound is playing, so when I go back out, it plays it again. That's funny. Yep. <laughs> Just doing work on camera here. That's always fun to watch. There we go. So, yeah, that's how the game starts. And I believe when the game ends, it plays the uh, sound of an Ender Dragon dying, but I forget about that part. This is just for me to get in and out. When I finish the map, I'll cover this back up. This is to get through between the two different sides. Um, so basically, this room is just... It just keeps track of, like, between the games and, like, getting everything set up. And this part here actually changes the time of day each game. So each game, it's going to be a different time of day. It's got four times. The first game will start on this setting, so it'll be with the sun there. I have daylight cycle turned off, so it'll stay that the entire game. Second game will move to, I believe this is midday. Yeah, because that's morning, midday, then it goes to evening, and I believe the next one would be night. I don't know. And uh, on the fifth game, it would just start over back at morning. And if we press it again. Yep. That sets it back today. This bit here is what resets the map. I'm currently in the middle of like labeling everything. Don't know why, I just want to. Um, this command block here, it teleports a player to this spot over here because um, I'm not sure if it's going to be an issue, but I'm doing it just in case. But it's to make sure that both sections are all loaded. I don't know why I have it like that. I'm I'm not sure it's going to... I'm pretty sure it won't be an issue. But I'm just having it in there just in case it is. Um, this is going to be the actual arena, arena in which everyone plays. And that's going to be the template arena, which it uses to reset this one each game. That's why this one is destroyed, because I'm testing it. Um, I tried to, like, have its, have the reset start here and end over there. And I, like, did math to, like, divide it up into all the different command blocks. But it did this, that, and that. <laughs> and that was it. However, I, I got rid of all those command blocks and I tried using a set block structure with a uh, world edit filter. The thing was massive. It didn't work. It caused way too much lag. <laughs> so I just got rid of it. And so now I'm doing it like in the individual parts, like the different home rooms here will be separate and then I'll just do the arena itself just by doing this section, then this one, then this one through trial and error to get it all f to fit. This was uh, left behind from a quick little test I was doing to get the red home set up be because that's the only part that can reset at the moment. It's the only command block that's set up. I'll continue removing that later because it's not needed. But yeah, this is where the players would fight. 
And um, to get in and out of the home base, you would move in and out through here. And it has a teleport command that, so like, if I was on the red team and I came in here, it would teleport me over to the homeroom area. But if I wasn't on the red team, red team, it won't. Because like, for example, the clock is running right now. Yeah, see? So the clock is running right now, but it's not teleporting me because I'm not on red team. And the reason why everything is encased in bedrock is because the map is fully destructible. That's why it needs to have a reset. Uh, there's a couple classes that are really good at destroying things. Like there's the demolition man, and there's the defense builder and offense builder. There's 10 classes you can pick from. But the way the score system works is each time a player gets a kill, it will then, if it detects a player within the map with a player kill score, which is one of the built-in scoreboards, whenever it detects a player with a score one or higher, It'll decrease it by one and increase their team's kill score, which is a dummy score, by one. And the first team score to reach ten is the team that wins. And that's done by this bit here. Yeah, so... And I... Yeah, this is the part, this here is the part that, like, ends the game. If you press this button. Yeah. It would announce which team won and teleport everyone in here. And sets all the scores to zero and puts everyone on the neutral team. And actually, I do believe yeah, I believe this part is what increases a team score. So if I get a button, yeah, so like that would play that would play each time someone gets a kill. This here is the class selection. When you select a class, you're teleported into here. Oh. Oh, <laughs> it, you're teleporting to there. Each team has a separate little room so that they can't, like, attack each other while they're in there. And basically, when you're in there, it sets all, it sets everything up so that you don't, like, get constantly teleported around, even though you don't need to be and stuff like that. And then you're teleported into here, where you receive all your gear, and then you're teleported back. And again, each team has a separate little room. Um, I forget what all this does mainly. Oh yeah, this is like, um, all the clocks around the map, I believe. And, um, oh yeah, this entire, basically all this right here keeps track of teams. I mean, it, no, it keeps track of like a class selection. And um, this guy up here is uh, what spams you with the message. You can see the signal come down. This is the only clock on the map that can't be disabled by that switch. And so that's pretty much all the redstone and command blocks and stuff like that, if you know what I mean. Um, I'll show you all the scoreboards and stuff. Objectives, it's list. Come on, oh, whatever. I'll just type it in. Yep. Uh, that's about it so far. 
the way I built this map, I got the idea from Etho because watching his map making videos because the map he's making is also circular. And so what he did is he only built one corner and then he used like a world editor or MC editor or whatever to duplicate it over. And so that's what I did. And so really all that I built was um this is the center here. So like from here to here about pretty much all that I had to build and then the rest of it was copied from the first quadrant. It took a while to build. Like two, three days I believe. Wasn't really going for a good design. I was just wanted a map that was decent enough to be used. And I got some elevation here. And of course, um, if you're playing like the dem demo man or one of the two builder classes, you can uh, like destroy. Well, anyone can destroy and place blocks, but. Only the demo man and the two builder classes actually get blocks and stuff like that and tools to use while destroying and placing blocks. So that's uh, about it so far. I'll uh, get back to work on uh, finishing the reset system and then I just have to figure out all the gear that all the different classes get because um I want each and every class to get a decent amount of gear and like um I don't want the demo man to just have like a stack in TNT and like a flint and steel I want him to have like a special type of armor that is like good that's like good with, like surviving an explosion but is pretty much useless in like PvP and something like that. And like the archer to have like a decent bow and like armor that's good for, for use at a distance but is crap when used up close. If you know what I mean. And um, I've got 10 classes to do this with and I want all the armor to have like custom lore and text and stuff like that. I'm not trying to make like a whole like RPG game here if you know what I mean. Just um I just don't want it to be like, oh, I have a bow. Yippee. I I want it to be like, oh, I've got a, like a strong bow, if you know what I mean. And it was made from like some special wood. And I've got 10 classes to do this with and it's not the type of thing and I'm not a creative person, so yeah. I believe I like brainstormed the demolition class a little bit at one point in time, but didn't like what I came up with. So yeah, that's the game so far. Uh, I hope that when it comes out that people like it. So far, everything that's finished works, which is a good thing. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.